What's different about these two designs? The first is a pill bottle, commonly found in the United States. And the other is a blister pack, which is commonly found in the United Kingdom. Both of these serve the same purpose, to store painkillers. However, the designs are quite different, and as a result, I need to interact with these products in different ways to achieve the same goal. With this design, I need to pop off the lid, put my hand out, and shake the pill bottle to get the right number of pills. I might overshoot by accident and have to put some pills back. With the blister pack, I need to put pressure on each of these pills to break them out of the foil. If I want 10 pills, which design will allow me to do this more quickly? It's going to be the pill bottle. We might overshoot with the pill bottle and have too many to take, but it's still going to be quicker than popping each one out with the blister pack. The design of the blister pack adds friction to the task. Since blister packs have been introduced in the UK in 1998, accidental and intentional overdoses have reduced dramatically. Here, friction protects the user from negative consequences, helping the user to think closely about the goal and the task and avoid user error. Designing friction is often not considered by designers because we're taught to design services that are built for flow, where users don't have to think or work too hard to reach their goal. However, there are times when you want to slow users down, particularly if you think they might make an error. Maybe you want your users to think more closely about the task they're performing, or you need them to read some important content that would otherwise be overlooked. A common example of this is the warning message a user receives from Microsoft Office when they want to close a file where they have unsafe changes. This friction allows users to avoid making any errors by giving them a chance to think about their action. There's one thing to be aware of though, designing friction into your product to meet purely business needs is not going to go down well with your users. For example, take budget airlines. When a user wants to check out, they're presented with lots of sequential screens or overlays that ask them if they want to choose seats, add insurance, rent a car, and so on. The friction introduced here is designed to help the company upsell. However, if users find friction counter to their goal, then they're going to find it irritating and it could negatively color their experience with your product and ultimately your brand. So consider the goals and tasks your users have and look at which tasks or points in the user journey are error prone. Consider whether adding friction can help your users. Lastly, where you add friction, test your designs with your users to understand whether your designs are having the desired effect.